save 10% with my code BOBBY10. Just kidding guys, today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, your favorite topic yet again today, Sufism explained by Hamza Youssef. Guys, keep in mind that I just became Muslim. I'm still learning and I believe that this is what you guys appreciate, that we are learning about Islam together. I'm not taking the keys now, locking up my brain and throwing them away. Quite the opposite. The Quran encourages us to ask questions, to think, to ponder and reflect. Therefore, I believe it would be a disservice to the community to not ask those questions. So today, I'm very excited to see what Hamza Yusuf has to say on Sufism. With no further ado, let's have a look. Sufi as a term that needs to be defined because a lot of people claim to be Sufis that have nothing to do with Sufis. One of the Mauritanian scholars said, That the, the, and he's talking about the Sufis. He said there was a people that lived the best life, the life of the Sufi. But afterwards they turned it into a livelihood. And you call the one, they used to call the one who goes down that path a Salik. Salik means you're on the Sufi path. He said, but today that group is Hizbun Halik. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a sect that's going to be destroyed or perish. His point is that Sufism, like all the other traditions in Islam, became corrupted. Even Hassan al-Basri early on said... I mentioned this previously here on this channel. My wife comes from Senegal and she has a very tainted image of Islam because she saw how certain people in Senegal worshipped so-called saints, so-called saintly families even. And then I did some research myself and I found out that the majority of Muslims within Senegal would be Sufis. But yet again, I don't believe that this is what Sufism used to be. Nowadays it has been tainted. It has become a sect. And sectarianism is of course discouraged within the Quran itself. I'm not interested in a new group. I'm not interested in a sect whatsoever. I don't even identify as anything else than Muslim. However, yes, it is true. I'm very curious about the mystical aspects of Islam. About the Sufis, he said it was a name, with a, it was a reality without a name, but now it's a name without a reality. So the Did Sahaba were all Sufis, uh, without that name Sufi. And, and, and that's if you define Sufi to mean 
Sidi Ahmed Zarruq in Qawaid al-Tasawwuf, he said there are 2,000 defini- more than 2,000 definitions of tasawwuf. But all of them revolve around the fundamental definition, Sidq al-Tawajjuh ilallah, sincere inner directedness to God. So if you define tasawwuf as sincere inner directedness to God, then it's a good thing. If you define it as something else, I don't know. So when you, people talk about the Sufis, if you go to the Muslim world, there's people that call themselves Sufis, and later they distinguish between Sufiya and Mutasawifa. The Mutasawifa were people that pretended to be Sufis. Okay. The Sufiya, and early on, the Muslims had positive things to say about Sufis. Uh, they were a group of people, the early ones were very much into zuhud, which is detachment from the world. They were called the bakka'un, the weepers, because they cried all the time. Uh, Rabi' al adawiya introduced love into the scenario, and it became more of a, less of a fear of God than... And I more mean, the real question that we have to ask ourselves is tasawwuf, the mystical practice of looking within, if you will, was it found in a certain way with the Sahaba? Was it found with the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him? If so, then yes, I would have to assume that it is part of Islam. Of a love of God. That's what's interesting to me. So, I would like to know if they uh, practice But it. Ibn Ashir, who died in 1040 uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the Islamic... Uh, period in the 17th century in the in the um, in the uh, uh, Christian era, uh, Ibn Asher, who wrote the textbook of North African West African Islam, everybody in Morocco that went to even a kutab, just a basic school, learned Ibn Asher by heart, and that was the basis of religion in and. He begins the book by I heard this from a very good Muslim brother of mine. He told me as well that in North Africa you have much more of a mystical tradition. In, in the madhab of Imam Malik, the aqidah of Imam exactly. al Ashari, and the path the of Junaid al Salik. Mm. I mean, that was Islam to, uh, to North Africans, West Africans what? for since the beginning. And you'll find the Isnad goes back all three. And so, Traditionally, I mean, there's a lot of corruption in Tasawwuf, but overall, Tasawwuf has been uh, a central and extremely important force in, in keeping Islam centered in rahmah and love. And when you remove those principles from Islam, it becomes a harsh thing. And this is why the people that hate Tasawwuf are noted for their harshness. Mm. That makes absolute sense. It's as simple to as that. And I would rather You be cannot on- have a spiritual tradition without spirituality. Otherwise, you're trapped in literalism and intellectualism. And that is just an aspect of the human mind. You will never invoke the soul if you do not dive into the spirituality of matters. On a boat with Sufi Muqtadi'a than with these other group. Like if the ship sank and there was a it's boat... It's two-dimensional. And I saw, you know, this kind of Salafi Wahhabi group. And then I saw a bunch of... Sufis singing Qasidas, I'd much rather get on the boat with the Sufis because the Wahhabis will end up throwing you overboard saying your aqidah is not sound or something like that and, and there's only food for enough of, for, for a few of us, you know. The Sufis, they'll just like, ah, marhaban, come on, you know, it's all good. Maybe the reality so is somewhere that's between. That's the truth, I'm sorry. You know, and, and I'm not somebody that attacks groups, I don't like attacking groups and things like that. And people... If you look, I mean, I've had a public career for many, many years. You'll be hard-pressed to find me speaking ill of any group. But you just did kind of, right? Kind of backhanded there. Mm. All right, guys, this is already it for today's short video. See, it did not hurt. Thank you for sticking with me exploring Sufism. That being said, it wasn't so much of an exploration here today. He told us about the love that we find within Sufism. But this is not really what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is the mystical practices that we find in Islam and moreover that we would have found with the Prophet and the Sahaba. This is what is really interesting to me. So if you know any videos 
videos that explain directly what the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and the Sahaba practiced to get closer to God, please let me know in the comment section. Because yes, if anything, I'm interested in the true Islam. However, as for right now, I do not believe that we find the true Islam only by reading, only by taking every word literal. I cannot believe this because I had many, many spiritual experiences myself and therefore I do know in my heart that the truth lies within. We need contemplation, we need meditation, we need the remembrance of God. Otherwise, we don't have any spirituality. We're two-dimensional beings, only flesh beings that run around and say that we obey God. But how do we obey God? By not going within. For me personally, this is truly a mystery. I'm open to suggestions. Guys, please let me know in the comment section what you think about this. For me personally, religion, spirituality does not function without spirituality. Go figure. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.